very good morning welcome back to my classes uh, we'll be continuing our session on epidemiology so today we have a small topic um, that is measurement in epidemiology how do you measure measure things in epidemiology so let's uh, see what are the tools of measurement so we had uh, covered uh, epidemiology in detail all the study designs that is descriptive analytical and experimental so once we start the study that is epidemiology how do you measure it so we have a lot of things coming across in epidemiology that is mortality which means death morbidities uh, means like cases disability uh, disease attributes a lot of things so today we will be uh, seeing only the mobility measures uh, that is what uh, really important uh, as an epidemiologist uh, remaining are also important but we will be seeing mobility measures mobility means mostly the cases mortalities the death okay. so tools of measurement so tools uh, we know every uh, professional has tool if we go to a doctor he he has tool uh, as bp apparatus uh, thermometer so using this he measure our uh, blood pressure and temperature uh, the way will come to a diagnosis so likewise an epidemiologist is also having uh, tools to measure the mortality or morbidity whatever it is so the basic uh, tools are proportion rate and ratio okay so the proportion rate and ratio so the proportion is nothing but percentage uh, it is uh, like uh, we are calculating the number of people in a group of people and multiplying it with 100 so there will be a numerator which is a part of denominator because the cases will be from within the population so numerator and denominator are connected and there will be a multiplier of 100 and there will not be any time factor why it is important will come to know once we see the rate okay so if it is a yellow circle among the total means 1 by 3 here it is 2 by 6 so we just multiply it with 100 so here is an example which i used to show in my lectures so what proportion of this class are multi fans so the multi fans divided by the total class into 100 will get the proportion so similar the Mohanlal fans, so the total number of fans divided by total number of students in the class into 100 will give the proportion of that particular thing. Okay, so we'll come to the real life example. Uh, what proportion of the population is suffering from diabetes? We get the data of diabetes patients and divide from total population, you will get the proportion of diabetes patients. So second one we are seeing is rate. Here the time factor comes. Okay, so the time factor is only comes in rate. So we have seen uh, cricket matches. So usually we see in over rate, uh, run rate. So how much runs is scored per hour? How much hours is bowled per hour? So all these are rate. So always there will be a time factor. So numerator uh, is part of denominator. Definitely, obviously it is will it will be a part of denominator and there will be a multiplier usually we multiply rate with 1000 and proportion with 100 we can uh, do it with 100 or uh, 1000 it doesn't matter but usually we do it with 1000 uh, uh, it has a time dimension this is the most important thing rate is always expressed in time dimension uh, you will get to have a better idea once we see the examples where proportion is just the percentage of people affected with something among the total population there is no time factor is involved so rate is uh, we commonly say uh, death rate or birth rate so death rate how do we calculate death rate is number of deaths in one year by mid-year population in 2000 so this mid-year population we usually take uh, in statistics the mid-year population the population which is present on the july 1st that is a mid year because uh, we take six months to june and six months july to december uh, probably july 1st will be the mid-year population so the population which is present on the mid-year day will be taken as mid-year population 
so here numerator denominator and there will be a time factor okay so the run rate is another example so rate involves time dimension uh, the last one is ratio ratio is like male to female ratio husband to wife ratio doctors to population ratio here the uh, striking feature is numerator and denominator are two different entities in proportion and rate it is expressing the same factor but in ratio the numerator and denominator are two different things males and females doctors and patients husbands and wives students and teachers they are two different entities so numerator is not a part of denominator so suppose sex ratio that is male to female uh, in kerala the male to female ratio is 1000 to 1084 so this male and female are two different entities unlike the rate and proportion the doctor population ratio there is one doctor for every 7500 patients so these two are two different things so numerator is not a part of uh, not a component of denominator uh, it is two random quantities okay that is rate that is ratio so one teacher uh, five children uh, male to female ratio uh, this is doctor population ratio this is one is to 145 this is percentage that is doctors uh, shortfall at PSC level this is uh, 27 percentage of doctor is not present in primary health centers in UP 34 percentage is not present that will divide number of people who are uh, supposed to be there and divided by total number who are posted so these are proportion and this is ratio we this to this phc this uh, proportion and um, rate this is rate okay infant mortality rate this is per thousand uh, live birth for one year so that period is there uh, time factor is there that one year uh, that is um, denominator and numerator are part of the same thing here also numerator and denominator part of same thing but here it is the ratio doctor and population is two different uh, entities that is 1 is to 495 uh, in Goa and in Kerala it is 1 is to 8 level. So this is a summary of tools of epidemiology that is uh, ratio, proportion and rate. Okay, This is rate uh, it is 11 per thousand live birth in one year. Okay, So here time factor is there in these two cases time factor is not there so summary we have covered three things proportion rate and ratio okay so now let's go to the principles of epidemiology so there are four principles basically one is exact observation we need to strict rigorous and accurately precisely take the observation and it should be free from error that means correct interpretation and there should be a scientific reasonable and intelligent explanation and the construction also should be based on knowledge and technical skill okay so i made an acronym every coffee requires sugar that is e c r s so exact observation correct interpretation rational explanation and scientific construction okay so this is principles of epidemiology in the beginning we learned about tools of epidemiology uh, mortality uh, i told you we are not going into detail that is death um, related stuff so we are going directly into the morbidity measures okay so this epidemiology is very vast like an ocean so only what we need to learn is uh, based on our objective if it is based on our exam purpose or research purpose whatever it is it should be based on purpose okay so we have morbidity measures basically two morbidity measures are there commonly used one is incidence and one is prevalence so incidence and prevalence we already talked in a case control and cohort study in case control study uh, we get prevalence and in cohort study we get incidence so since cohort study is going in future or forward or prospective looking this is finding new cases okay so which happens in the future time so because cohort study starts without any disease so in future or a period of time 
they may develop case so that becomes incident that is occurrence of new cases incidents and existence of new and old case that is prevalence so incidence is always a rate so you should mention time factor also for one week this many new cases or one month or one year uh, it depends on the time frame but prevalence is just the proportion of people so if in case control study we just take the number of cases divided by the total population we get the prevalence that includes new and old cases but incidence it is going future so there will not be any old case only new cases will be there prevalence we are checking the background information or previous information until today how many cases are present until today how many cases are present so uh, it includes new and old cases okay so today cases and yesterday's cases or previous month previous year everything comes in prevalence so basically you can say that incidents how many people with the disease are newly diagnosed each year which is like a video it is a throughout the year or the follow-up year follow-up study or a prospective study it goes throughout the year whereas the prevalence how many people in a population currently have the disease at present how many of them having disease that is just like a snapshot or a picture okay so that is the basic difference about incidence and prevalence so incidence is a formula number of new cases of a disease in a particular time period divided by total population at risk at the same period into thousand okay so incidence as i mentioned earlier is a rate it commonly uh, expressed in thousand multiply with thousand whereas proportion or prevalence we multiply it with 100 so incidence is the number of new cases and since it is a rate there should be always a time period so just check an example on january 1st 2016 there are 10 people and while reaching on january 31st the patient out of 10 people three people became deceased so it is 3 by 10 over a period of one year so 0 0.3 per one year so we can uh, calculate it by 3 by 10 that is 3 cases by 10 over a period of year so this time frame is very important okay so this is we are starting without any disease as i mentioned in the cohort study design okay over one year period only three people got disease so we have to mention the time frame okay incidents which will not be there in prevalence so there are two types of incidence that is incidence rate or incidence density or cumulative density or incidence proportion okay so incidence proportion is it will be like percentage there will not be any time frame but incidence rate is the true incidence or incidence density so you won't you don't get confused with incidence proportion which is coming in percentage okay proportion will be percentage okay so incidence rate is the actual incidence so just an example uh, it's a basic thing cumulative incidence and incidence rate a uh, numerator will be definitely cases but the denominator will be different thing in cumulative incidence they, they'll take the initial population but incidence rate they take the person time here i'll explain you in detail so incidence rate goes from zero to infinity but whereas cumulative incidence goes from zero to one because it is percentage so maximum value is percentage is 100 so the maximum value will be one for cumulative incidence but incidence rate will go to infinity it is also known as incidence density or prob proportion probability you don't get confused this is so let's take an example where for 12 people are being followed up for 14 years so the 12 people 12 people are being followed up for 14 years starting from 1980 to 1994 so the first person uh, entered the study at the year one and he was followed up for eight years but after that uh, he might have left the study okay so he was under risk okay they all were uh, exp uh, all were uh, population under risk or to develop a particular disease all were having a habit of smoking uh, to uh, to expect a outcome of lung cancer okay so this person was uh, observed for eight years all eight years he was under risk so the time at risk became eight so this is known as eight person year so in in incidence uh, risk or incidence density we calculate person year that is a time frame we calculate in this format that is uh, 
population under risk okay for the time frame so this has become eight person here the second person uh, entered the study in the beginning uh, and it was followed up for 10 years but in uh, at the year of uh, 10 at the 10th year he developed uh, lung cancer so um, the person under risk was 10 years okay so once uh, it's developed disease there was no risk uh, it became a disease so this is uh, 10 person year and the third and fourth person it was they entered the study at the beginning and they were followed up for all 14 years and they having that uh, risk but they never developed disease so this became 14 person years each this person died at four year four person year and this person entered the study in 1981 okay then they were followed up for uh, 12 years actually this is 12 not 10 uh, 1981 to 1993 it will become 12 okay so that's a mistake uh, and second uh, and the remaining all person entered the study in 1981 so uh, all this time person here will calculate uh, and will divide from the total number of case okay so the 14 uh, year the three cases have been reported okay the second person fifth person and 11 persons were the cases among all 12 people okay so we are not taking uh, the number of people what we are taking is person year the population under risk the duration of population and risk so this 12 people were uh, under risk for a hundred person years how we get hundred person years is different okay so this is how we calculate incidence risk or incidence density we have to calculate person year so this is how we calculate person year from the beginning of study until they leave or study until they develop the study we calculate the duration okay so that's how it is 8 10 10 14 14 hope you clear about this person year and calculating incidence risk or incidence density so the one more example here the person uh, is getting disease at uh, second year so uh, become only one person here here also one person here because he left the study here he became um, this is at uh, 1991 so two person year here he left at one uh, second year so one person year so this is three person year this is five six five uh, he became deceased here okay this is two actually uh, this is one okay this is also one okay so here there's a slight uh, no no it's all clear okay so uh, only four people are uh, became uh, four people are becoming diseases one two three and four so four uh, cases per person here we have to calculate so this is one one three one three five six five one and one so total 26 person years so four by four cases by 26 person years so four by 26 is 0.15 or 15 uh, by 100 person years or 0.15 person years so this is how we calculate person years so this is incidence risk or incidence density okay so this question mark is the person is lost to follow up as uh, i mentioned you about the attrition factor in cohort study or follow-up study so you might have left out the study okay and this is a uh, case so once you become a uh, case uh, after that we won't calculate the risk because the risk was for having the disease the risk was to for developing the disease so he is having only one year for the risk second year develop the case so the next one we uh, we've seen now is incidence risk or incidence density now it's a cumulative incident that is i have told you this is a percentage okay just an example it will it's very easy so in 2001 to the, uh, 2001 uh, there were 5572 women aged in 20 to 39 years who were sex workers based on the record of uh, whatever 45 were hiv positive during this uh, three year period or four year period uh, they have it should be 2001 to 2005 so what is the cumulative incidence of hiv positive during these four years okay this percentage again comes in prevalence but the problem is prevalence we don't mention about four years prevalence ways we just calculate 45 
that is new cases we will calculate the total cases that will come beyond uh, 2002 there is no time frame but we can calculate time frame that is uh, period prevalence that is different thing but that will include all the new and old case okay so this is cumulative incidence so 45 new cases by total population that is 5572 divided uh, it will come 0.8 percentage okay so incidence rate uh, the denominator you can see person year the time frame is uh, present but in cumulative incident there is no person here it is just percentage it is almost like um, prevalence because uh, prevalence is a proportion this is a proportion but here we have a time frame okay time frame is important that's why it is different from prevalence so there are a few uh, common example that uh, rape a number of uh, reported rape cases in per 1 lakh women in 2014 and 2013 so in delhi we can see this is 1813 uh, in 2014 whereas uh, 1441 uh, in 2013 so this is a uh, rate okay rate per 1 lakh women okay so it's a common example so what about incidents it is referring only new cases and it is not influenced by duration of disease that is like if a disease happened uh, 10 years back or 5 years back it is coming in so okay, we are seeing only new disease but the time frame is different so it is always refers to particular time period and denominator is people at risk we had seen in incidence risk how the time person here will be calculated next is the prevalence it is proportion so it is just uh, like the old and new cases or a particular period of time there is no time frame it is a time frame is there uh, in pre period prevalence but it is checking all the new cases the true prevalence is only one point of time and total population into uh, total population at risk into 100 so there are two types of prevalences one is point prevalence and one is period prevalence so just take an example on jan 1st 2016 uh, there are two people are deceased uh, in Jan 31st uh, there are uh, five people are in disease category so in Jan 1st if we take um, prevalence that is 2 by 10 that is uh, 1 by 5 or 0.2 or 20 percentage here it will be 50 percentage so it is a number of cases that is 2 by total population that is 2 by 10 here it is 5 by 10 so 20 percentage and 50 percentage will be the prevalence but the period prevalence so in point prevalence we are taken only one time okay jan jan 1st or december 31st period prevalence we will be considering the total cases okay so the total cases throughout the time is same cases are written here so again it will be five cases five by uh, 10 but the time frame we have to mention during one year period okay it will it will be the same as point prevalence at december 31st because december 31st case the two cases are carry over from the jan 1st so over this period of time only five cases are present so point prevalence and period prevalence is different so period prevalence this is point prevalence is uh, as I told you, uh, 2 by 10 and 5 by 10, 20 and 15 percentage. So, in period prevalence, we will be seeing the all number of cases throughout a one year period. Okay, this is not like incidence. Incidence is different. We will be assessing the time person, but here we will be taking only the number of cases and total number of population. Okay, so here six people are. Uh, having disease and 3, 4, 5, 6 into 36. So, 6 by 36 that is 0. 0.6 percentage. Uh, 6 by 6 into 6, yes, 36. 6 by 36. 6 by 36. So, number of cases are 6 and total population is 6 over the period of 1 year. So, it started in Jan 1st and it ended in december 36 so the percentage is 16 percentage so the period prevalence is 16 percentage over one year period of time 
okay so the point prevalence will be just on one day or uh, period prevalence will be or a period of time it can be one week one month or uh, one year or five years uh, let it be any time frame doesn't matter but we'll be checking cases or a period of uh, cases and uh, the total population will be taken so the denominator is different in prevalence denominators will be taken total population but in, in incidence uh, it is different uh, incidence rate will take the time person whereas in cumulative incidence will be taking the uh, population under risk okay so here we take uh, all cases some cases might be uh, present before uh, 2016 uh, they are carrying over to 2016 these two might be uh, became diseased in 2014 if they are cancer patient they might have started the disease in 2010 12 13 nobody knows but they are still being uh, cases so we'll count this but in incident cases we'll just see at the beginning of study there is nobody is having disease and over a period of time we'll be checking the incidence of cases okay so in uh, prevalence it is not like that if cases was uh, present even the status of case was present even before the start of the studies will also be counted in chronic uh, cases chronic disease cases uh, it will always happen because uh, the duration of disease is very long in chronic cases like hypertension cancer so such cases uh, these uh, might be present before this uh, checking date so this might be present on cases they became diseased on 2013-14 and still they are disease so that also will be counted okay so in incidents that will not be counted because we see in 2016 jan 1st so there should not be any case and we will follow up for one year two year or five year and we'll count the number of new cases okay and the denominator will be time person year in incidence density okay this is prevalence it will be percentage uh, if it is a point prevalence or period prevalence so prevalence is like uh, it increases if the duration of disease so i told you like cancer patient it increases if the patient is having a longer natural history and a patient is being a case that is if it is a chronic disease the prevalence is also will be increases and if the treatment goes uh, prolonged it will increase and increase in incidence when people come from outside it will increase and healthy people if goes from our city to outside the denominator will go less so the prevalence will increase prevalence will decreases all the cases all the uh, points against the shorter duration uh, better recovery improved cure rate if decrease incidence emigration of new cases if uh, new cases are going out of the city and immigration healthy people are coming into a city all these cases prevalence decreases so prevalence will give you the magnitude of problem okay so an administrative and planning purpose we can use it so this is some common example 40 percentage of uh, indian uh, people are underweight population okay so it will become around 30 or 40 crores so how it came and the number of underweight divided by total 130 crore this percentage will get so so like that uh, the 20 million obese women that is 3.7 percent uh, 9.8 percentage uh, Indian men that is 3.7 percentage and 20 million that is 5.3 percentage the denominator will be 130 crore okay so how we calculate the prevalence okay so the prevalence uh, So let's take an example uh, which I have seen uh, case of incidence risk. So this is uh, something uh, we compare it for prevalence. Okay. So here uh, October 1st, 2004 to September 30, 2005 we are observing. This downward arrow means date of onset of disease. Okay. Date of death is a positive sign and the upward arrow is recovery. If you are taking prevalence uh, on April 1st, 2005, okay, 
So we have to see how many cases are present on April 1st. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 cases are present on um, April 1. That is point prevalence. Okay, so let's take a total population 100. So our point prevalence on April 1 will become 7%. So if it is October 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, I have uh, written it here. October 1, the prevalence uh, will be 6 percentage. Okay, 6 by 100. Here it is 7 by 100. But what happened was... Uh, <coughs> one person got uh one person died before april 1 2005 and two person two person died but uh before 2005 uh, april 1 what what happened was uh was three person became ill okay so that's why this change here two got out of the study but whereas three came into the study so that is why this became seven seven and this became six okay on september 30 just count one two three four and five because two people died here a new person came here okay so on september 30 this is just five cases one two three four five so five by hundred that is five percentage period prevalence for the period of october 1 to september 30 okay so how many cases like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so total 10 cases were present we are not bothering when they joined or whether they died or not nothing whether they were there as a case will consider it that is the prevalence okay whether they recovered or they died uh, nothing uh, matters so that is why incidence is very important prevalence is just giving a percentage okay so this will give you a clear idea about prevalence you can just see this as an onset this is death and this is recovery so period prevalence you know that 10 percentage what what happened was uh, many cases that is one two three four five people died during this period and one two three four people uh, newly came into the disease uh, so Mm, so still it is uh, 10 cases uh, per uh, total population so we kept total population as 100 so this is period prevalence uh, we had seen uh, one example here okay so mm -hmm. it's uh, just a graphical presentation and it's, it's very uh, precise uh, graph it's to uh, explain this point prevalence and period prevalence so denominator will be total population okay in cumulative incidence also total population but they will consider only cases. So suppose if you take incidence of October 1 to September 13, what happens is you check the new cases 1, 2, 3 and 4. Then you have to calculate the person time here. So this will be 4 new cases, 4 new cases during this period. Okay, see 1 new case, 2, 3 and 4 four new cases then we have to calculate the time person year or time month or time week so we can calculate in any way so that is different uh, in with the incidence okay so prevalence and incidence can be expressed in this graph in this picture okay so prevalence is the total cases okay this will include old new cases so incidence is a new case from the tab the new cases are being into this prevalence okay so pre prevalence some will be recovered or some will be cured or some will be cured or some will be died so you can see that uh, here some people uh, recovered some people recovered some people died uh, here some people died so that will uh, change the uh, prevalence because uh, on the recovery and on the death uh, here people were changing okay so uh, our death and our recovery the prevalence will reduce so incidence and uh, prevalence there is a relationship that is prevalence will be prevalence is always high okay this is very huge prevalence is incidence and duration so incidence if it is 10 cases per 
thousand population per year so incidents will be always like this okay this is time person year this is time frame uh, population and new cases uh, prevalence will be a total duration five years it will be 50 per uh, 10,000 or 5 percentage okay so you can calculate uh, if one is missing if prevalence and duration is there you can calculate incidence and same likewise so we have uh, completed uh, the morbidity measures that is prevalence and incidence and it was uh, proportion and rate actually so tools of measurement were rate ratio and proportion okay thank you i'll come up with uh, another topic in next class